You who have not seen it do not know what hell looks like from the top. That's what Germany looks like. That's what Austria looks like. That's what any place that the 8th Air Force and the 3rd Army worked on looks like. I do order and declare that all persons held as slaves within said designated states and parts of states are and henceforward shall be free. These words of Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation issued on January 1st, 1863 ended the institution of slavery that had been present in the United States since the nation's birth and had held millions of Americans in bondage. During the Reconstruction period that followed the bloody Civil War, racial tensions in the U.S. were at all-time high as former slaves attempt to integrate into the changing American society. African Americans were heavily discriminated against, and their rights to voting, citizenship, and economic freedom were severely repressed. In the late 1930s and 1940s, with World War II looming on the horizon, African Americans were initially prohibited from participating in the fight. So brave African Americans took a stand against racial barriers and stereotypes with the goal of protecting their beloved country, and protested for the ability to join the war effort. A chosen few of these enlisted men were accepted into 761st Tank Battalion, part of General George Patton's 3rd Army, and became the first African American armored unit to see combat in World War II. These courageous individuals participated in pivotal battles against Nazi forces throughout the European theater, liberated numerous Nazi concentration camps, and forever changed the opinion of African Americans in the military. In his Emancipation Proclamation, Lincoln additionally declared that such persons of suitable condition will be received into the armed service of the United States. This statement spurred thousands of free African Americans to enlist in the Union Army and battle the Confederates during the Civil War. Furthermore, African Americans were represented in the Spanish-American War by the valiant Buffalo Soldiers and during World War I by a few African American detachments such as the 369th Infantry who became known as the Harlem Fighters. Despite the successes of these groups, African American soldiers still faced harsh discrimination and were looked down upon by their white comrades. Dissatisfied with the performance of his African American unit during World War I, a white commander of the 371st Infantry Regiment of the 93rd Division wrote that in a future war, the use of the Negro should be in labor organizations. Jumping to 1939, with Hitler's blitzkrieg into the nations of Europe and the increasingly aggressive movements of Japan, war was once again on the horizon for the United States. The Negro Press, the National Association for the Advancements of Colored People, or the NAACP, and the Congress of Racial Equality, or CORE, pressured the Roosevelt administration to allow African Americans to fight the fascists in the defense of the ideals of democracy alongside white soldiers. A few white officers, namely Major J. Leslie McNair, also realized the value of the integration of African Americans into the military to the manpower of the U.S. Armed Forces. The efforts of these individuals were finally recognized as Congress passed the Selective Training and Service Act in 1940, which FDR signed soon after. This revolutionary act stated that there should be no discrimination on account of race in the selection and training of soldiers. Following the passage of the act, an all-American armored division called the 5th Armored Unit Division was created and included three tank battalions, the 758th, the 761st, and the 784th. The 761st Tank Battalion was activated at Fort Knox, Kentucky on April 1, 1942 and was composed of 36 white officers and 593 enlisted African American soldiers. I was very fortunate to have parents who were not prejudiced and I was afraid that if those of us who were not prejudiced did not volunteer then some of those who were prejudiced might do so and so therefore I said I'll be willing to serve with the Black Tank Battalion. They were soon relocated to Camp Clyborne, Louisiana, where they learned the strategic, operational, tactical, and technical aspects of armored warfare. As men spent the majority of their service at camp, they found a few forms of recreation to ease their minds and bodies from the grueling training days. There was a sports arena in which the men could participate in competitive boxing matches, and a chapel in which the men could fulfill their religious obligations. On the days that they were allowed to leave camp, the recruits were able to travel to the nearby city of Alexandria, where they would socialize and entertain themselves in the black section of town known as Little Harlem. Incidents of violence and discrimination towards the visiting recruits were common in Alexandria as the white citizens were not used to seeing African American soldiers on the streets of their city. 
commanded the battalion switched hands numerous times until July 4th, 1943, when it was transferred to Lieutenant Colonel Paul Bates. Bates was different from the stereotypical white officer of the time period, as having grown up in New Jersey, he had not encountered racism, and thus did not have prejudice towards his African American soldiers. November 15th, 1943, the 761st Tank Battalion relocated to Camp Hood in Killing, Texas to continue their training. Camp Hood turned out to be a hell full of discrimination and segregation that was unmatched by their previous experiences at Camp Claiborne. Also during this time period, future baseball legend Jackie Robinson was assigned as a lieutenant to the battalion. Robinson, however, would soon be discharged after an incident on a bus where he would refuse to give up his seat and go to the back at the orders of a white officer. On June 9, 1944, three days after the Allied invasion of Normandy, the 761st Tank Battalion, still stationed at Camp Hood, received orders from the War Department for deployment into Europe as part of General Patton's Third Army. By October 9, 1944, the unit of 776 enlisted men and 36 officers, of whom 30 were African American, landed on Omaha Beach, Normandy, France. Soon after their arrival, General Pat addressed the men. And, and stood up on a half track and told us, he says, uh, I asked for you because I heard that you were good. He said, nothing but good soldiers come to my army. And he says, I don't care what color you are. You can tear up these towns over here as much as you want to. You kill all of those SOBs. You got people, the Negro presses and papers, so they all depending on you. And I'm depending on you. Damn, don't you let them down. And don't you let me down. Assigned to protect a number of infantry regiments in combat, the 761st engaged Nazi troops for the first time at the town of Vicksor City on November 8, 1944. Due to a large amount of hidden mines and fierce enemy fire, Company A experienced heavy casualties. The Battle of Moorville occurred the following day and featured similar heavy casualties. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Bates was seriously injured and sidelined from action until February of the following year. Following the Battle of Morville, the battalion continued north in France and fought through numerous towns on the way to the Maginot Line, a series of fortifications that were a key objective that separated France and Germany. On December 9th, the 761st broke through the Maginot Line and briefly entered Germany, before receiving orders to move on to Belgium. On December 16th, in Belgium, the 761st encountered the German counteroffensive in a conflict which became known as the Battle of the Bulge. Courageously fighting through heavy snow and freezing temperatures, the battalion scored victory after victory over the Nazi forces. The Battle of Tillet, specifically, proved to be bloody and fierce as the Germans defended with large amounts of armored units and infantry and fought until the bitter end. The worst thing I saw in combat was seeing my own men killed. This is the worst. You see, you become close to, you form like a brotherhood over a period of time. And during that time, you become closer than a brother. The 761st fought through Christmas and New Year's until the end of the Battle of the Bulge in late January, from which the Allied forces emerged victorious. Next, through February, the battalion participated in action in Holland, where they were rejoined by the recovered Lieutenant Colonel Bates. In early March, the battalion received orders to advance towards the Siegfried Line, and as a part of Task Force Rhine, broke the line of German fortifications on March 23rd. Following their intrusion into Germany, the 761st captured a multitude of towns and liberated the infamous Nazi concentration camp of Buchenwald. Bonds of brotherhood forged in the fires of war united the troops of the 761st during their campaigns across the European theater. They truly did live up to their motto, come out fighting. Their pride for their democratic nation and their hope for a non-segregated world sustained them during times of struggle. On the battlefield, they showed skill and ingenuity, rivaling or exceeding that of their white counterparts, earning them the respect of those white comrades and that of their white officers. Today, the United States military is composed of around 22% African American soldiers, many of whom operate complex machinery and weaponry, thus carrying on the legacy of the heroic members of the 761st Armored Tank Battalion.